The following special event is brought to you by Ash Brokerage, a practice enhancement company. Welcome to Steve Saban's fourth annual tribute to Halloween entitled, The Coroner. We'll perform autopsies on unplaced cases from the files of the declined, the postponed, and the heavily rated. Our expose on life insurance underwriting to usher in the substandard season. And throughout the week, we'll be giving away our underwriting guide of the top 10 commonly seen conditions. And on today's show, how lifestyle credits and shaving programs can help place your case. Part three of this week's series on impaired risk underwriting. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician and Innsmark. Let's get down to business. Over half of all Americans own life insurance are in the wrong rate class and overpaying for coverage. Now's the time to secure a second opinion. And one way to get a second opinion is to understand how lifestyle credits have impacted underwriting. I've never seen anything take over our market not only with good underwriting changes in traditional underwriting, but adding lifestyle credits to this has been a really huge area for us. I want to look at this because reviewing underwriting options going forward, I want to be able to look at basic ideas on lifestyle credits. Lifestyle credits are the ability to take some kind of ancillary information that could actually be worth maybe up to a half of a table. So you definitely want to look at certain areas, things that we would have never considered before. So I have here a lifestyle underwriting questionnaire. It's a basic questionnaire that helps me ask all these questions that will identify certain areas of lifestyle credits that could be applicable. And remember, especially in underwriting, if it's worth anywhere between a quarter of and a half a table, I might be able to use lifestyle credits to get down to a table shaving program. Now this is really huge because it could be worth anywhere between two tables or more sometimes so that you can get to a table D or table C with a carrier that has a shaving program. So let's just go through some of the basic purposes of this questionnaire because it really helps the underwriting department know what the proposed insured is doing beyond just the traditional paramed exams uh, results as the, and the APS and the history, medical history. What activities do you routinely participate in? Like for an example, do you do golf every day? You play tennis. Maybe you're in an intramural league in the park a recreational system. What kind of activity do you do? Do you go to the workout every day? Do you have a personal trainer? I want to know all that information. And remember, not only is it, is it we're trying to address physical activity, but how about mental activity? People belong to bridge clubs. They play poker on Thursday nights. They have all kinds of different games that they're into, especially in our society now. The whole millennial generation is a one big gaming culture. So what kind of participation, what kind of games are we playing, recreational, whether they're physical or whether they're mental. And do you participate in any type of regular exercise routine? It's one thing to say I go to a personal training, but when I say, what is the rate? How many times daily do you do this? You do it, do it once a day? Do you do it once a week? Do you do it once a month? I need to know the frequency. So like in my case, I walk every day for 30 minutes Every day I get up, that's what I do. I'm putting that on my lifestyle credit. And it says, do you drive, and if so, how frequently? Now this is targeted more for our older clients, but think about this. I notice that if you're not driving a lot, your actual property casualty premium goes down because they're gonna do it by miles. And I may wanna put that in there, not only do I drive, but here's how frequently I drive a week, and here's the miles. I have a pretty confined area. I go to the store, I come back. I go to my church or synagogue, and I come back. They want to know what your driving behavior is like, and that could really impact, again, giving you another credit to put on, on top of the debit and credit balance sheet of an underwriting offer. Do you manage your own financial affairs, or do you outsource it to an advisor? Now, at first, this sounds just like a regular routine. Are they just trying to apply and make sure that you're using an advisor? But is a person where they're at a, a place in their life where they really can't manage it well and they've already outsourced their personal finances, they want to know what kind of mental capacity do you have? And are you outsourcing that because you're really kind of unsure about your ability to kind of watch your finances? Another one is, are you employed? Are you still working? Remember, we have people working past age 70 now. They're unbelievable. If you go to any of the, when I go to Sam's Club on the weekend, I also always notice there's older gentlemen and older women that are greeting me at the door well into their mid and 70s and they're working almost full time. And 
then think about this. If you're not employed, what are you involved in? Are you involved in charitable uh, causes? Maybe for your church, maybe for your society, maybe you're working with big brothers, big sisters. I want to know what kind of volunteer work you do. And do you have any hobbies? Some people, their puzzle hobby. I have a person in my family. They love puzzles. They make them. They put them on mats. They love to do it. It's really part of their routine. So you want to look at all these possibilities, everything you can look at. And remember also, are you married? Unbelievable. That has an impact. The longer you've been married, this has a major impact on credits. So when I'm looking at lifestyle credits, I want to just look at some of these questions so that I can get the possibility or to, to secure the possibility of getting maybe a quarter to a half a credit so I can really reduce my underwriting offer, my premium they're going to have to pay. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate their agent population as they once did. But now you can have a quick synopsis of the top 10 commonly seen conditions at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your prospects. Just email me for your copy of the top 10 commonly seen conditions at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. We're talking about underwriting. We're always talking about table shaving programs that are offered by carriers. And this could have a huge impact on your client. And things have really changed. I've been in this business for almost 31 years. And when I look at what has changed in this area alone, it has really been amazing. Think about this. We now can qualify some carriers will actually qualify all the way up to age 75 for a shaving program. Not everybody, but there's a few out there, a few anomalies. And the face amount now goes from zero to 25 million in a shaving program on one carrier. And remember, we now go as high as table D. So that's four levels up from standard. To me, there's a lot of benevolent underwriting to be had and knowing who plays well and what impairment and how to use their shaving programs. In another episode, I talked about how to use it in concert with lifestyle credits. So you may be able to use your lifestyle credits, which could be worth anywhere between a half to a quarter of a table, and you'll be able to apply that to a shaving program. And you can, if you can get to table C on a lot of these carriers, you'll go all the way down to standard. So it's possible, depending upon the impairment, to go from table six to standard using a combination, an artful combination, I should say, of lifestyle credits and table shaving programs. Now there's a lot of carriers involved in this and I'm just looking at a few of the ones that we're looking at. When I, if you say, Steve, I'd love to have that chart, I'll be happy to go and give it to you. Uh, just write me on that. And then look at this, what it says here. These are table shaving programs by several of our carriers. So I'm going to be looking at their healthy credit programs, their table reduction programs. I'm looking at their ages, where it works. Notice, by the way, there's a couple here. Like in one carrier, they'll actually go from age 20 to 70, where table shaving with another carrier doesn't start till age 41. Now, again, when I'm looking at minimum face amounts, most carriers are sitting around $100,000 as their minimum face amount. Some don't even declare it. So their actual product line actually has it. You could use it. Again, remember, you have to check before you move forward with a client. Always check. Have these credit ratings, have these table shaving programs, have they actually changed? And you want to make sure that it's all available in the state that you're going to write the contract in. Also, remember maximum face amounts. As I said before, here is a couple of companies. Look at this, second to die, $20,000 or $20 million, and individual at $25 million. So there's some really high numbers here, and then they'll list all their products. Some carriers say, we don't care if you're using our shaving program, it fits all plans. Other ones will say, no, it only has second to die and permanent policies. They don't use term insurance with their shaving programs. So what you want to do is make sure you go through all the list, figure out what they're offering, look at their product line. I always like to look at a proposal first before I actually go quoting so I can understand where do I think I'm going to lay out. If I can get to table C on most of these carriers, I'm going to be able to drop whatever I'm paying, or whatever I would have paid at table C and get it down to at least standard. And remember, a few of our carriers use standard plus, which actually make it a little cheaper. They actually write their rated cases on standard plus, and that could be a five to 7% savings in premium. So when I'm looking at some of the, ca the contracts here, as I'm going through this, again, I'm looking at contracts that 
have, go all the way up to age 75. In this case here, that's an anomaly. Another one uh, goes up to age 75. I want to look at every possibility going through this, and this is about 12 to 15 carriers really occupy and dominate the table shaving program. So in combination with lifestyle credits and using a table shaving program, fitting the impairment with the right carrier, you can really actually lower the offer down and get within the, the premium tolerance of the client. Remember, over half of all Americans who own life insurance are in the wrong rate class and they're overpaying for coverage. Now's the time to secure a second opinion. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker-dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? Just hop out to our video website archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you tomorrow. Today was part three of our five-part series on life insurance underwriting. To order your free copy of the top 10 commonly seen conditions, go out to downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. And remember, half of all of Americans who own life insurance are in the wrong rate class and are overpaying for coverage. Now is the time to secure a second opinion with the largest in-house underwriting staff in the brokerage community. And don't forget, you'll follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or just email me at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ashbrokerage advisor. Happy Halloween.